Y'all, hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Y'all, it's time to talk spooky books. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about a spooky book TBR, and y'all helped me pick some spooky books to read. So now it's time to read those books. So before we get into all that, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. Y'all, I don't know if you can see this, but I have a dog in the car. We're on our way to a doctor's appointment. She has to have a little checkup. So I figure while we're there, I can read. So I have brought my Kindle and let me tell you what's up. So if you saw my video a few weeks ago, you know that I had a stack this big of October TBR books. And it was already like mid-October when we started talking about it. So we needed to winnow that stack down some and pick the books we really wanted to read. So that's what we did. I'm still getting some comments about which books to read, but we decided for certain that I was going to start with Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. So I have that downloaded onto my purse Kindle. And I will start reading that while Daisy and I are at the doctor's office waiting for her appointment. So here's what I know about Ninth House so far. It's by Lee Bardugo, as I mentioned, but y'all know I like saying Lee Bardugo, so just hunker down and get ready because you're going to hear that a lot. So it's by Lee Bardugo. It is, I believe it's a dark academia. I'm, I'm almost pretty sure I know that. And I think that it's about maybe one of the Ivies. So like Harvard, Yale, one of those, because are all dark academia, like it kind of has to be set somewhere with like big buildings and stone walls and ivy on everything, right? So <laughs> as you can see, I know a lot about this book. So, okay, I don't really know anything. Let me get into it. Let me start reading and I'll come back and let y'all know what I know, all right? So y'all sit tight and I'll be back when I know something. Y'all, hey, I just finished eating lunch and I'm about to go post up on the couch with the furry felons and read some more Ninth House. But I realized, did I even show y'all the cover of the book, Ninth House? But I realized that I don't know if we've talked about this at all and I don't think I've told you anything that I know or that I think. So I wanna do a quick check-in and tell you some things cause y'all know how I get. I get to read and I'm like, oh, one more page, one more chapter, and then I never check in, and then I forget what I've told you and what I haven't told you. So, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo is set at Yale. I, I know I already told y'all that it's dark academia, so it's set at Yale. And y'all, y'all know this is my first Lee Bardugo book, and I've never heard anybody say like that they don't like Lee Bardugo. The worst or like the most I've heard anybody ever say is I've heard like maybe a Lee Bardugo fan say this isn't their favorite of her book. Not this, but like whatever book they're reading isn't their favorite of her books. But so nobody doesn't like her. And now I know why. Y'all, this is so good. The writing is great. And it's so like... I don't even know how to describe it, which is great because I'm trying to describe it, right? But it's so like natural that it, like it just sucks you right in. The characters are amazing. The setting is, okay, let me slow down. Let me tell you what we're talking about. So Alex Stein is our main character. She's a she and she goes to Yale. So the story is, or the book is told in multiple timelines. And when we start off, Alex is like posted up at some house or something and she's alone, she's hiding out and she's hurt. Like something has happened to her. We don't know what it is. We're not told a whole lot of anything other than that things went wrong. Then we flash back or like the thing shifts back to like winter or something and it's during the school year and she's at some kind of ceremony that she has to oversee. So we start to get the sense that this ninth house, this group that she's in, that she hasn't really told us much about yet, that they like oversee these ceremonies or something. And I don't know if we find out then or, but we come to find out that ninth house is the ninth of the secret societies at Yale 
and that they are tasked with sort of managing the shenanigans of the other eighth houses, like their intra-house shenanigans and the shenanigans that they do that affect people outside of the houses. And I think it's like legit magic. It's hard to tell so far if they're actually like magic or if they're just putting on like some kind of shows that make it seem like they're doing magic. I don't know. I think it's magic, but so that's what the ninth house is, is they're managing like the goings on between the other houses or the goings on of the other houses. So we learned that pretty quickly. And where I am now, I'm about, I don't know, 80 pages in and we're starting to really get to know Alex, whose real name is Galaxy. Seriously, how cool can you possibly be? We're getting to know her, and it's the beginning of her freshman year at Yale, and she's becoming part of this ninth house. So we're learning about the ninth house and like the other secret societies we are learning through her as she learns. So it's kind of cool, and Lee Bardugo's writing is so good, y'all, that like she'll give you some information, and it's so intriguing that you're like, like on the edge of your seat is so cliche, but you're seriously like, like you want more. Like something's happened to Alex, like how she ended up there, there was some kind of something that happened to her and we don't know what it is, but you know that it was bad. And you just get like the tiniest dribs and drabs of it and you like you want more. So um, as David Bowie would say, you want more and you want it all. Anyway, sorry, so that's where we are so far. We're at Yale, we met Galaxy or Alex, and we're part of this secret society that oversees the other secret societies, and we're pretty sure there's magic and that we have to oversee the magic and maybe like control something about the magic, control the magic, and y'all, it has to go bad because look at the cover of this book. That cannot be good things happening. So I'm gonna go read because I am completely sucked in. I have a couple of hours to read before, well, there are other things I should be doing, but I'm not gonna do those other things because I'm gonna go read for a couple of hours. So let me go do that. And then I'll be back and let y'all know what I find out. Cause I'm a little bit worried about Alex already. I am, what, well, like I said, I'm 100% sucked in, but let me, you know what y'all, let me go ahead and forecast this. Let me get this down on record. There's something shady about this girl. And not just like, clearly she ended up at Yale through some kind of something like, there's something going on there, but there's something shady about her. Like she's sketchy and not necessarily like in the good, bingy, like Johnny Kavanaugh sketchy, good kind of way. She's sketch. So let me go read. And I, you know what? Y'all know I'm honest. I will let you know if I'm wrong about that, if I've misjudged her. But let me go read and I'll come back and let you know what I know. I've been riding the bike this morning and reading Ninth House. And I'm going to come back later once I've, you know, collected my thoughts and, well, collected myself and I'm going to tell y'all some things about the book but there's something I want to tell you hang on sorry I'm making coffee but there's something I want to tell you before I forget so and it's kind of like an all up in your feels kind of thing so I told you that I thought Alex was a little shady y'all Alex is a little shady but there's more to it than just that and I really like how Lee Bardugo presents it to us. I don't want to tell you too much, but here's what I want to tell you. Alex is shady because of some circumstances in her life and some ways that she's had to live. And I think it's easy to judge that, like to judge somebody because of that. But the way that Lee Bardugo presents it and presents Alex to us and Maybe that we already know Alex, but so I'm gonna be telling y'all more anyway. I'll explain all of this later. I feel like I'm talking in circles and not actually communicating what I'm trying to say. I've already told you that the book kind of jumps back and forth. Well, now we've jumped back back to before she goes to Yale and some of the things that happen that get her there or that sort of lead to what happens to get her there. 
And some of those things are sort of her life circumstances, like how she lives. And it's easy to judge people that live that way. And I think Lee Bardugo does a brilliant job of letting us get to know Alex before we see this part of her life so that we know her as a person before we know her as somebody who lives this way. And I just think it's really cool because Sometimes I think we're more inclined to jump and judge a person who d sort of does these things or lives this way harshly without knowing anything about them. But now that we already know Alex and either like her or don't like her, and I mean, and really like, I think you can't not like Alex, but I think now that we already know her, once we learn these things about her, they're just, it's just like, okay, well that happened. So anyway, I like it. I'm an, and I'm hungry and I'm a little lightheaded because <laughs> I've been riding the bike for a little minute. So I'm going to eat breakfast. I'm going to do some work. I'm probably going to finish the book before I come back and talk to you about it again. So let me do those things. Let me get cleaned up and then I'll come back and let you know. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get, I'm going to work, get cleaned up, come back and like get my thoughts together, tell you where we are in the book. And then I'm going to finish it and let you know my overall thoughts. Because y'all know if you get my overall thoughts in the end, I forget my thoughts in the middle. So I'm going to eat breakfast and I'll be back. All right. Bye, y'all. All right. So I taught my classes. I got myself cleaned up. And now I have some time to read. So I think I'm going to finish Ninth House. But I need to tell y'all what's going on because the hits are coming hard and fast. Now we're getting close to the end of the book. And I told y'all how I got all up in my feels earlier. Y'all, it was early. I'd been working for a while. I hadn't eaten yet. I was a bit lightheaded. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But I was having a, a moment with Alex, so I thought I would share. So anyway, I don't know what I've told you about the actual like story of the book. And of course, I don't want to do any spoilers. So I'm going to try to be very, very careful. You know that the main character is Galaxy Stein, or Alex, and that she has gone to Yale, that she's kind of a fish out of water. We talked about that. It's definitely a fish out of water tale. But she ends up at Yale because of this ability that she has, that we talked about the houses, right? That there are these secret societies like Skull and Bones and those. So she has a... a an ability or a gift or something that the group that sort of oversees the societies can use. So somehow they knew about her. So they go and find her and she's gotten herself into trouble. So they offer her the opportunity to come to Yale and work with them and go to school, get an education, all the things, get her out of her troubles. And all she has to do is work with this ninth house lathe, I think, at... I think it's, well, in my head, it's pronounced lathe. I don't know how it is in real life. But anyway, all she has to, all, air quotes, all she has to do is work with this group and help them oversee the other eight secret societies. And come to find out, and y'all, I don't want to tell you too much, but come to find out, for some reason, there's a whole lot of supernatural activity in the area. We'll leave it at that. And that's what, like, the societies dabble in those things. I think I already told you that. But I think maybe I said maybe they did and maybe it was all just made up. Oh, they do. So Lathe has to sort of oversee them and try to keep them in check. So that's the premise of the book is that she works with this group overseeing the other groups and overseeing like their rituals and stuff and managing their use of like magic or whatever it is, this force, this whatever it is that's in the area. So I don't want to say much more than that, but I've told you that it's m multiple timelines, I guess, that we jump back and forth from the current day, which is where we start off, to we go back in time during her time at Yale. And then we jump back to her like before all of this starts time and learn what happened. And that was when I got up in my fields this morning, learning about like her, not past life, but like her life before all of this happened and what sort of made her who she is. And y'all, it's just really good. The characters are fantastic. They're dynamic. They're interesting. The banter is great. 
you'll, I anyway, love the characters that I love. And there are characters that I straight up freaking hate, like dislike so, so much that like when they come up, I don't even want to read about them. Like I dislike them so much. So that's re like, that's a really good sign when you hate a character enough that you're like, why are you in my book? Like get off my page. So that's really good. And the, I think I said the banter, the conversations are very good. So it's really good. I'm enjoying it very much. I say this all the time. I don't think it's going to change. Like, I don't think my enjoyment of it is going to change, but you never know because things can go bad at the end. Although for me, honestly, it's usually a book that I am not really enjoying might get better at the end, but it, it might go bad. I don't know. I have about... 50, 60 pages left to go. So let me finish reading. I don't know that I'll come back today. Y'all don't even know what day it is. I don't know why I even say that, but I probably won't come back today, but I'll check in tomorrow, let you know what we think about the end and let you know where we're going from here. All right. So y'all enjoy your afternoon, enjoy your evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Y'all, I finished ninth house. All the things that I thought I knew about the world are not what I thought they were. And I mean like the world, the world, not just the world in Ninth House. Everything I thought I knew about the world in Ninth House got turned upside down, spun around on its head, and then just fell apart. <laughs> Might be a little bit dramatic, but let me tell you what. So y'all know I never see the twists and turns coming. I saw twists and turns coming in this, but then they weren't what I thought they were. So anyway, the ending was fantastic. Love the book. Highly recommend. There is a second book. So I don't know if it's a duology or just two books so far in the series, but it is Hellbent. It's out now. I'm not going to get it right now, but I'm probably going to get it soon. Not in physical, like not the physical copy because it's hardbound and I want the paper, like the softbound copy to go with the one that I, to go with my ninth house, like I want them to match, of course, but highly recommend, really, really good. And now we need to move on to our next book. Y'all, we're going to read a Riley Sager book and I'm already afraid. So I'm obviously I'm in the car, so I don't have the physical book to show you. So I'll stick it up here somewhere, but we're going to read, I believe it's called Home Before Dark. And it's, like I said, it's Riley Sager, which already has me a little bit all up in my feels about getting scared. But this is the one about the girl who I think inherits a house from her dad and her dad's an author and he wrote a book about the house being haunted. And I think she doesn't believe the house is haunted and she's gonna go renovate the house, the haunted house that she doesn't think is haunted. So uh, again, what could possibly go wrong with that? So that's Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So let me do my runnings about. I'm going to go get started on that. And I will let you know. As soon as I know anything about it, I will come back and let you know. Y'all, hey. Sorry, I know this is all like bumpy and jumpy. And I'm, I, I'm just all out of sorts. The furry felons are out of sorts. I don't know if you can see that felon. But the furry felons are out of sorts. Let me tell y'all what's been going on. So I've been staying up too late at night <laughs> reading this ridiculous book. And so I didn't get up in time. Well, I got up in time for work this morning, but not like as in time as I should have gotten up. So the felons got up late. So our schedule's off. Y'all know how I get when my schedule's off. So we're all out of sorts, but let me just quickly tell y'all, you know what? I'm going to sit down. We never sit in this room. I'm going to sit over here and tell y'all what's going on. So this book, is that going to backlight me too much? Hang on. Let me <laughs> There's too many windows in this room. This is just not going to work, but y'all, I'm out of sorts. You're just going to have to deal with it. I'm sorry. I love y'all. So Home Before Dark, Riley Sager. I told y'all this was our next book. Whose idea, y'all, raise your hands. Whose idea was it for us to read this book? I know I brought it to the table, but some folks said you should read Riley Sager. So let me tell you what's up. It is, I told y'all that the main character inherited a haunted house from her dad and she didn't believe it was haunted. And then decided, sorry, I'm, I'm trying not to be all bumpy and jumpy, but I know that I'm being all bumpy and jumpy. 
She is a home like redecorator or something, remodeler, redec, re, a home design, whatever. She renovates homes and sells them. So she decided that she's going to go and renovate this haunted house that she doesn't believe is haunted. So, which all well and good, whatever, we can make our way through that. But y'all, dual timelines, we can make our way through that. The other timeline is the haunted house book her dad wrote. So not only are we having to deal with, let me get these felons. Not only are we having to deal with her, like real life being in this haunted house, we're having to read the haunted house book that her dad wrote. So I've only just started, but I've been staying up too late reading the book. And then like I turn off the lights to go to sleep and I'm like, what am I doing? This house is haunted. And it's like, dude, that's a book. You're not living in that haunted house. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little, you know, sketched out by this right now, but we said we were going to read it. We're going to read it. Oh, this is lovely light. Y'all, I should light all of my videos by the light of the refrigerator. All right, so I've... There should be an award. If, let me say this. If there was an award for the wor worst lighting in a YouTube video, I think I just won it. Anyway, we are working on Home Before Dark. And let me tell you what. I'm going to say one more thing and then I've got to get back to work because I'm completely off schedule because, you know, home before dark. I'm going to try to set this up here and see. I don't have, I have nothing, nothing going on today. There we go. What was I going to tell y'all? Oh, I know what I was going to say. So there are some scary things in this book, but what's really scary, and I think we've talked about this before, is I think that Stephen King did this in Salem's Lot. It sets up things that could happen in real life, like um, the noises in the house, right? Like she's downstairs in the house and there's a noise upstairs or something. And she goes to find the noise and it's gone. And y'all, how many times, okay, those of us that are, you know, think that there might be some, you know, haints and goblins and things going on. How many times does that happen? Like you hear something and you look and by the time you look, whatever it was that was haunting your house and making that noise is gone. So so far anyway now this might become like full-on poltergeist like clowns flying out of the closet scary so i have that to look forward to but so far it's the kind of scary that's like kind of just scary around the edges like an uh, y'all i promise i'm not going to tell you too much about this book because if you want to read it i want you to still want to read it after i'm done talking about it there's an enroir in her bedroom or like a wardrobe or something. I don't know what they call it, but who has not been afraid of the doors on something, right? Like you look at it and you're like, I wonder if somebody's head is in that container behind that door. Okay. Maybe not a head, but you know what I'm saying? Like the closed doors and you're like, Ooh, that's a little off putting. She's got the like freaky haunted enroir in the house, in the book. So, so far, like nothing crazy untoward has happened with this thing, but like, it's just enough that I'm not saying that we have an Anwar in our, like our hutch in our bedroom isn't really like haunty, but I have to walk between two closets to go from my bathroom, like to and from the bathroom. Literally what is more haunted and think about it. So if you're walking past a closet, what do you do? You like give yourself sort of like a wide berth around the closet. What do you do if you have closets lined up, right? Like across from each other. All you can do is walk like right straight down the very middle of the hallway and hope that the ghosts and goblins in the closets have short little arms, like little T-Rex arms. That's all I know. I need to sleep more. That's all I got y'all. So home oh, before dark might be getting up next to me. I'm going to go back to work. It's light out. Y'all can see it's light out now. So we're okay. <laughs> so I don't know what I came here to tell y'all other than that if being like scared and put off by a scary book is enjoying a scary book, I'm enjoying this book so far. <laughs> I'm going to go back to work and I will check. I'm going to read some more. Hopefully 
things will level off and it'll be less scary after a little while. But I'm gonna go back to work, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna take a shower for heaven's sake. Then I'll check back in with y'all later and let you know how things are going. <laughs> Bye y'all. <laughs> y'all, we gotta stop meeting like this. I promise sometimes I am showered and like clean and wearing real clothes, but now is not one of those times. But go dogs, I will not apologize for this, go dogs. Anyway. It's morning, the furry felons and I are on a break in between classes and I just wanted to update you quickly, let you know that, sorry, the lens cap, oh, well, that's not a problem anymore. I was gonna say the lens cap is wobbling on my camera. <laughs> just ripped that off. Anyhow, I finished Home Before Dark last night in the bed. Let me say this, I'm gonna, you know what? Let's go upstairs. Let's go back to work while we're talking. I wonder if, and of course the answer to this is yes, but I wonder if authors that write these books know that people lay in the bed at night and read their books. So they write scary scenes about like things that happen in the dark at night in bedrooms because y'all, there were a couple of times in that book that I like, I'm not gonna say I screamed, but I made some noises that the intern came into the room like, what, seriously, what the hell is actually wrong with you? So buyer beware of that. But anyway, sorry, this buyer beware of this light and it's gonna get worse. Whoa, that was a bad choice, sorry. <laughs> I'm still working on my worst lighting on the YouTube's award, by the way. So anyway, I finished Home Before Dark last night and I have a couple of thoughts about it. And I don't want to talk about the actual like plot of, all right, hang on. Let me get set up and I'll be right back. All right, that, not that that's great, but it's a little better. <laughs> At least I'm not moving and jiggling around. So a couple things I want to say about the book and then I'm going to get out of here. Finished it, it's, it's, it's really good. Like it's not brilliant, but it's really good. And here are a couple of really good things about it. Maggie, our main character, takes us through this whole thing, right? That we are propelled through sort of the modern time in the book with her, like her storyline and interspersed in that is, I told y'all we have to read her dad's book. Well, I realized about halfway through that the things that happen in her dad's book are paralleled with things that are happening in her life. And I don't want to say too much because y'all know I don't want to give anything away, but she doesn't believe that the thing is haunted. Like she doesn't believe what happened back then or doesn't believe her dad's version of what happened back then. And it all starts off with, I might've told y'all this already. They go to this little bitty town by this haunted house, go to this little bitty town and they make it like 21 days and then leave in the middle of the night, leave all their stuff there, just leave. And supposedly, according to dad's book, some like paranormal thing happened there. And so they left. I, I almost said what it was. Y'all, this is why I can't be trusted. Something happened and they left. And so she's going back partially like to find out what really happened and partially to clean up this house to sell it. So we go with her through this book and she's trying to figure like her whole life is shaped by that, by those things and by her parents' versions of what happened there. So she's trying to sort of unpack all of that as she's unpacking the literally physically unpacking the things in this house. And if you look at it that way as like a psychological thriller, like a psychological thing. It's very interesting and very clever and very well written. And y'all, seriously, there are a couple of scenes in there that scared the bejesus out of me. And I'm squirmy and I'm prone to being scared of the dark. And I was reading it in the bed in the dark. So not, I mean, I don't always make the best choices. Anyway, finished it, very much enjoyed it. And now we're moving on to And Then She Was Gone, which I should have brought upstairs with me, yet another bad choice. But I'm going to start reading that today. I'm going to, I'll get going on that. That's the one that's something about a woman whose daughter disappeared and then she meets a man later and like his kid reminds her of her kid or something. I don't even know, but I'll stick in a picture of the book here. I, dang, I really wish I grabbed it, but I'm not going back downstairs because that's so very far away. 
The cover of this book is beautiful. So I'm excited just to carry the book around for a couple of days because the cover is so pretty. So I got to get back to work. Let me get started on that book and then I'll come back and tell you what I think. Y'all, I seriously do not have time to be messing around talking about books with y'all. I got to get home. I have a class in like, I don't know, 12 minutes, no, like 20 minutes and I'm 14 minutes from the house. <laughs> y'all know how I hate this, but I have to tell you about Then She Was Gone, which I think I keep calling And Then She Was Gone, which is a totally different book. That is not our book. Then I don't know what that book is, but Then She Was Gone is Lisa Jewell. And I told you that it's about, our main character is Laurel and she's the mama. And she has this fabulous little family with her husband and three Chirins and everything is fine and they're clicking right along and she has this golden child, then she was gone. And like one day her daughter is like, Go, I don't, I can't remember like exactly when things happen, so I don't want to tell you too much. But she's going somewhere and doing all the right things, then she was gone. Well, fast forward 10 years, and we meet this man with a daughter who looks just like the Ellie, the disappeared daughter. So there's all this, like, is it just Laurel and her brain playing tricks on her? Because she says for years, you know, she'd be in a crowd and see Ellie or she'd hear her voice or something. And y'all, it's not like they found Ellie's body or know that Ellie's dead. She's just gone. So bless her heart, imagine the torture that this mom went through or is going through not knowing where her daughter is or how her daughter is or what happened to her daughter. So she would hear her or see her or like, you know, see somebody out of the corner of her eye and turn and know that it's going to be her daughter. And of course it's not. So then yeah, 10 years later, she meets this like perfect man, which ding, ding, ding. Then were my alarm bells going off in case you couldn't tell, but she meets this perfect man and he's got a daughter that looks just like her or that reminds no that looks a lot like her ellie and she's like what's happening here so it's very intriguing I'm about halfway through y'all i cannot stop reading and here's what i'm finding so intriguing about this book is y'all know how i am when i fall in love with a character i will just devour a book well there are no characters i mean i don't like dislike them there are no characters I don't like, but there are no characters in this book that I'm like, oh, you know, I care and I want and blah, 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 you know, whatever, whatever. There are no characters in this book that are, I don't know why I'm trying to talk to y'all on this road. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry. Welcome to the back roads of small town, Minnesota, but I'm going to do this quickly and get off here because this road doesn't get any better. But the storyline is absolutely intriguing to me and I cannot stop reading it. I'm seriously halfway through. I'm like, I don't know, 150 pages in and I started it yesterday. So I'll finish probably tomorrow morning or tomorrow sometime, but it's so good. And there are like twists and turns, but not real there. Yeah, there are twists and turns and y'all, I know I never see the twists and turns coming, but there are just these little like intriguing little bits that just kind of keep you going and keep you wanting to know more and more about the story and about the characters. And maybe they are characters that you're supposed to care about. And I don't like, like I said, I don't dislike them. I just don't really care a whole lot about them to the point that like, if the story wasn't great, I wouldn't like really care to read about the characters. but the story is so good. So let me get off here. Cause like I said, this road does not get any better. Let me get off here and get to the house and teach my class, not make myself late. Cause I'm sitting here talking to y'all. So let me do this. Let me finish this book and I'll be back and let y'all know what I think about the ending. And I think maybe we'll read one more book before I wrap this thing up. So let me go, let me read and I'll be back. Y'all I'm sitting out here trying to enjoy this last little bit of fall before winter gets here. But now the wind's starting to blow, so I need to wrap it up and go inside. But let me tell you what's up. I finished, then she was gone. 
It is so, so good. So I told you that Laurel is the mom and that Ellie is the then she was gone girl. And I don't want to tell you too much about it because sort of watching the twists and turns and like learning them and figuring them out as they come is part of the joy of the book. So I'm not gonna tell you anything about anything except for this. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the plot. I don't love the kid. There's no character in here that I really love or that I, sorry, the thing is doing the thing. So I'm gonna try to do this quickly and be done and go inside. There are no characters that I loved enough to want to like follow them. I don't care what happens to them beyond this book, but the plot was enough to make me like, y'all, it was a page turner. And I never say that. Like, I, I don't think I've ever said that before about anything. But it truly was. Like, I was like this the whole time. The ending, I don't know if this is even going to make any sense. But I don't like the ending, but I get it. Like, it ended the way that it should have, I think. And I don't like it. But it's a good ending, and I understand it. I shouldn't say I don't like it because that's not really right. No, I think that is right. I don't, I don't like the ending, but I understand it. And I think that's the way it needed to end. So, and I'm not going to tell you a thing in the world about it because I want you to read this book because it was so, so good. So this is done and y'all now, and so that was by Lisa Jewell. I think I told you that. And so now I'm going to read The It Girl by Ruth Ware. We talked about this. It's set at, I think, Oxford or Cambridge, one of those. A fancy school with big ivy-covered walls. And something happens to the It Girl, like there's a group of friends and the It Girl gets dead. And I think the story develops around her killer. Like maybe it's years later and something happens to her killer. Okay, I don't really know what it is, but I'm cold. My hands are getting cold. So let me go inside. Let me start reading and I'll come back later and let you know what we're actually reading about. All right, so y'all sit tight and I'll be back. All right, y'all, I've been reading The It Girl, The It Girl, The It Girl for a few hours. And as promised, I'm coming back to let you know what I know. I think I told you before that I thought something was going to happen to The It Girl. Oh, something happened. All right. So... When the book opens, the something has already happened. The It Girl's dead. And we find out from our protagonist, Hannah, that the murderer or the person convicted of murdering the It Girl has died. He's like found dead in his prison cell or something. So this stirs up all kinds of feelings for Hannah, who was the It Girl's college roommate and like best friend or something. So we go through lots of feels with Hannah about what happened and how it happened. And of course, Hannah is the principal, was the principal witness in the case against the now dead convicted murderer guy. So she has all these feels about it. So the story is told to us in sort of a dual timeline situation. There's now and or like before and after. After is now. So it's after all this stuff happened and the dude's dead and before is back when, before the it girl died. So they were in school in, I think I told you this, in Oxford. And maybe I didn't tell you this. I don't know if I knew this before. So they're in school in Oxford and that's where they meet and that's where all the things happen. So we meet Hannah in her present day. She lives in Edinburgh and she's like working. She's like a normal grown up person. So we meet her then and then we flash back with her to, I don't know why I feel like I need to hold that book. We flash back with her to Oxford and then the timeline sort of goes back and forth between after, which is like now in Edinburgh and before, which is back then in Oxford. And y'all, it's kind of a slow burn. I don't know if I would think that if I hadn't just recently finished Ninth House, which is also a like set in the Ivies and dealing with the college kids kind of thing. That was not a slow burn. So this is more of a slow burn, but I still really enjoy it. It's, I think we said before it's Ruth where I just almost whacked myself with this book. Did y'all see that? So close. It's Ruth Ware. I enjoy the writing. I'm enjoying the development of the characters. And it's very interesting because we're seeing 
like grown up versions of obviously not the dead it girl character, but a lot of the characters as adults and as their like college selves. So that's super interesting. But anyway, interesting characters, interesting storyline so far. And really so far, it's just it girl was dead. The dude was convicted. Now he's dead. And Hannah's like, hmm, wonder how I feel about all this. So we're dealing with Hannah and her feels. So I'm going to read. I don't know how much I'm going to say about it, though, because like I said, it's a slow burn, but it's also like a psychological kind of thing. So I feel like the story is building and it's going to build and like weave all of these characters together and then things are going to get all blown apart. So I'm a little bit nervous about what I say because I don't want to like give things away that later are like, oh, you shouldn't have said that because that becomes an important like thread down the line. So I don't know. Let me go back and read and I'll come back later and tell you what I think and what I know about it. But so far, I think I really like it. I enjoy the characters. Y'all know my thing about banter. As long as the conversations between characters are good, I'll read just about anything. So, so far the conversation between the characters is good. So I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to go read and I'll come back probably tomorrow and let you know what I think. All right. So y'all have a good afternoon. Have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey y'all, I know, big surprise from the looks of me. I've been riding bikes and reading books this morning, but I gotta tell you what happened. It's been a couple days and I know I said I was gonna come back and check in and let you know what was up and I didn't, but here's why. Because, because every time I came across something, I was like, oh, I gotta go tell my friends that. Well, what it was, was something surprising in the book. And I was like, well, I don't really want to tell my friends that because I want them to read the book and be surprised when they read this. So there's literally nothing in the book that I want to tell you because I want you to be surprised when you read it. I know. So now you're like, okay, well, this is going to be an intriguing conversation. I know. But look, let me tell you what. The It Girl is a really good book. So I told you that Hannah is our protagonist. And that when we meet her, her high, no, her college roommate, April is dead. And that Hannah was the principal witness against the dude who's convicted of killing April. And that she's feeling some kind of way about it. Like we're not really sure about what, sorry, y'all, I know, sorry about all this, but we're not really sure, like, I don't know what she thinks about it or what her feelings are or whatever. So... And I told you about the whole dual timeline thing. Well, when we meet, we meet Hannah and April, like at the beginning of their friendship. We meet Hannah as she's going off to college. She meets April. So we meet them as they meet each other. And then the, that timeline sort of takes us through the development of their friendship and their friend group, which is really interesting. So we see their friendship so their characters develop, their friend group develops, and we see some sort of archetypes develop within that friend group, which are really interesting. And y'all, I completely figured out this whole thing, like I had it down, and then I was completely wrong. So it's really, really good. I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the characters. Did I hold up the book and like wave it in front of your faces? really enjoyed the book. It's did y'all it's really pretty. Like I enjoyed just carrying the book around. I grabbed it as just a prop now to say, "Oh, I finished the It Girl cuz y'all know I wasn't reading this this morning out there on the bike. Look how heavy this thing is. I would not be holding this thing while I'm riding my bike." Finished it, loved it, highly recommend. It is a slow burn. So if you're looking for something like quick out of the gate that's maybe fast moving, this might not be the one for you right now. Maybe go with Ninth House or, oh, or the one with the missing girl, the Then She Was Gone one. That's a good one. That, like I said, that had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. But this is a very good book. I really enjoyed the characters, enjoyed the character development, enjoyed the writing, the banter, all of it. So I highly recommend, and y'all, I gotta get out of here. I've been talking to y'all about books for like two weeks, and I wanna wrap this up and get it posted before I start talking Christmas books. 
which I'm about to start doing. So y'all let us know what you're reading. Are you reading Christmas books already? Are you reading Thanksgiving books? Are you still reading Halloween books? What you reading? Let us know in the comments. Y'all thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we are most definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos at the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.